receive a really healthy number of comments and it allows me to see what's happening and spot any recurring questions. And probably top of that list is a question. It comes in a variety of forms, but it all boils down to why does my car not charge as fast as the charger says it should? When our regular Tuesday feature covering all things to do with EV charging, Dave takes it on, dives a bit deeper into the answer. As a spoiler alert, Fastned have a charging speed calculator on their website that states that an Audi e-tron, for example, plugged into a 350 kilowatt charger will only ever reach 150 kilowatts, and that's under ideal conditions. Well, let's see why. And please, if you like this video, please subscribe. It really does help us a relatively small channel like mine. It allows you to be notified when the next video launches. OK, this will be very different from previous videos covering this subject. In my research, I've discovered a number of EV charging networks actually produce really helpful guides as to what to expect from a variety of different EVs, from Minis to Taycans. The first example you just saw in the intro with the Audi e-tron. Well, first, I begin with a very quick description of how a battery works. Well, in reality, a battery is just a collection of various chemicals in a container that react with each other to either give out DC electricity or store DC electricity, depending on what you are asking it to do. DC, by the way, is a simple term for current that flows in one direction only, like that from a battery. When chemistry, one of the very first things you learn is that all reactions proceed faster if they are hot and slower if they are cold, and most even grind to a complete halt if really, really cold. So the first thing you need to know is that the speed at which your battery charges changes depending on the temperature, and this applies to your iPhone. Try putting it in the fridge and then charging it. Yeah, it's totally safe to do, it goes down to zero degrees centigrade, but it, it takes absolutely ages to charge if it's cold. Well, you might be nice and toasty inside your EV with your heated seats and heater full on, but if your battery spent the night outside in minus temperatures, it will be stone cold through and through. And since it weighs the best part of a tonne, it will take simply ages to warm up. Or well, second, every battery in the world charges faster when it's empty than when it's nearly full. You'll have seen this with your mobile phones. It rattles along quite speedily when it's nearly empty, but then gradually slows down, and then quite dramatically as it nears being at 100%. A regular view of mine gave a brilliant example of this. Imagine a multi-storey car park. When it's totally empty, you can nip in, and you just take the first parking space. It's really quick and easy. But when it's nearly full, you might have to drive around for ages before you can find one of the last few spaces. This is battery charging. Finally, just before we get to the table of speeds, you must know that trying to charge a battery too fast, trying to shove in a really high charge rate that is more than the battery is designed to do, and more than it can safely handle, will permanently ba damage your battery. And the battery is by far the dearest part of your EV, so that really is not desirable. And that is why all EVs have their own built-in battery management system, BNF, BMS, that monitors the battery and the power available from the charger, and it decides how much the battery can handle, not the charger. It's nothing you as the driver need to worry about. It's automatic. So, summary of lesson number one. No matter what the charger can supply in power, measured in kilowatts, each car will only ever take the maximum that the battery can safely handle. In some cases, the car can safely accept more than the charger can supply. In other cases, the car will accept far less than the charger can supply. So let's start the table. This is courtesy of Fastned. Thank you. The figure stated assume that each, char has, each car has plugged into either one of the 300 or 350 kilowatt chargers, ultra rapid, or one of the lower power 50 kilowatt chargers, rapid, and both via CCS2. Not all models are included in this uh, display. I highlight the popular models and then refer to another table with from Osprey for the missing popular models. I stress this is not a which car to buy guide. It is intended to let you know how fast a car can charge. That's it. 
If you never use a public charger, ignore this table, it's not relevant. If you only do 20 miles a day, this is irrelevant, ignore it. But for people who drive further or those who cannot charge at home, this could be important. It is one factor. For example, a sales rep sitting for an hour or more while their car charges pitifully slowly does nothing for their mood or probably their sales performance. Also consider battery size. A huge 100 kilowatt hour battery charging at only 50 kilowatts will take well over an hour while a smaller 40 kilo kilowatt hour battery at 50 kilowatt speed will actually be a lot quicker. So, in alphabetical order, almost all Audi e-trons on an ultra rapid charger can only ever, ever accept a maximum of 150 kilowatts and above 80% state of charge, SOC, it will accept far less. A rapid charger will supply the full 50 kilowatts. Please be aware that these are not the speeds that you will get every time. They are the maximum speeds that an e-tron can ever accept. You will normally, almost every single time, get way less, often significantly less. And this applies to all cars on the following guide. Oh, by the way, the top of the range, and only that model, can accept 270 kilowatts, while the Audi e-tron Sportback 50 Quattro, what a name, can only accept 120 kilowatts, all the rest 150. So any e-tron driver who thinks they can plug into a 350 kilowatt charger and get 350 kilowatts has clearly not done their homework. Not a single car in their entire range can do that, no matter how much you pay. Moving on, alphabetically, we get the BMW i3. No matter which charger you plug into, the i3 is limited to 50 kilowatts maximum, and even that reduces as you reach 65% or 85%, depending on the model. In plain, if you arrive at an ultra-rapid charger that is packed and has a queue, and nearby are two older Gridser 50 kilowatt chargers that are vacant, go and plug in there. You'll get exactly the same speed as queuing for and using the 350. No, it will not charge faster on the 350, just like your kettle will not boil any faster whether you plug it into your home domestic supply or go to a nearby power station and plug it in. It's always the same speed. Now the BMW iX3 is different, 150 kilowatts maximum at the ultra rapids, 50 at the rapids. No other BMW models feature in Fastnode table, but they do on the Osprey table, and we'll come to that one shortly. Well, Citroen C4e, maximum 100 kilowatts, relatively slow, on ultra rapids and 50 kilowatts on rapids. Dasha Spring was an entirely snail pace at a very pathetic 30 kilowatts at all chargers. Probably not best suited to a road trip unless your pace is very, very leisurely. Fiat 500e has a maximum of 85 kilowatts, quite slow, at all charges. Ford Mach-E, the SR, is a leisurely 115 kilowatts, while a Mach-E GT ups that to 150 kilowatts on ultra-rapids and, of course, 50 kilowatts on rapids. Hyundai Ioniq 5 reaches a very impressive 230 kilowatts on their ultra-rapids, the other end of the scale is the Kona with a relatively slow 77 kilowatts, which drops beyond 58% state of charge. The Jaguar I Pace tops out at a meagre 100 kilowatts, but this drops off once the state of charge rises above 40%, really low figure. For Kia Nero, you see Hyundai, they're on the same platform, they're pretty much the same figures. Mercedes EQA, a meagre 100 kilowatts, while the EQC struggles to reach 110 kilowatts. Both, drop, both rates drop again after 40%. That's really low. I think you'll be getting the picture. If, and I stress if, charging speed and fast charging sessions are important to you, maybe you're a rep and you can't hang around charging. Then the Hyundai Ioniq 5 is looking a hard car to beat and you should avoid the Dasher Spring. However, it's amazingly cheap. Mini Cooper Electric, 100 kilowatts. Not impressive, but again, if you only ever do short commutes and you can charge at home, this could be a really nice car for you. It's horses for courses. Nissan Leaf registers a dismal 50 kilowatts, while the Aria ups that to 130 kilowatts. 
Well, Pergia, uh, the state is not tested, but it's likely to be identical to the same 100 kilowatts as the Citroen. They're on the same platform. Polestar 1 surprised me. That reaches a dismal 50 kilowatts, while a Polestar 2 leaps up to 150 kilowatts. Porsche Taycan, maximum 270 kilowatts, so above that of the Ionic 5. Now, if you can find the 800 volt ultra rapid charger, this speed climbs, but so does the Ionic 5. Note that the Taycan only gets 50 kilowatts on their rapid chargers, obviously. Renault Zoe, CCS, maximum 50 kilowatts. Skoda, Enyaq, 60 is 100 kilowatts, and the 80 is 125 kilowatts. Well, Tesla base models better than 150 kilowatts, while the Model Y hits 190 kilowatts plus. Not my words, these are fastnets. The old Model S, like mine, and the Model X do not have a CCS2 socket, so need an adapter. If we use that, we then get 140 kilowatts. That's what I get. Vauxhall Mocha E gets 100 kilowatts, probably like their other models, the Corsa and Astra, but these are not quoted. Volkswagen ID3 runs at 100 kilowatts, ID4 125. Older models like the E-Up and the Golf E get a disastrous 40 kilowatts. Finally, Volvo XC40 gets 150 kilowatts. Well, this is not an exhaustive list, so to fill in any gaps, we now turn to Osprey, who have their own table, but their maximum speed charger quoted is the 175 kilowatt. Cars which can charge faster, and there are many of them, may prefer to charge elsewhere. I probably would. So the Osprey table shows a BMW i4 50, maximum 175 kilowatts. Well, this will be charger restricted, as the book says, it can reach 205 kilowatts, although very briefly. Kia EV6, so also probably the Hyundai Ioniq 6, max out at 175 kilowatts as well. Both are capable of more. Interesting that the Mercedes EQA shows us 112 kilowatts on an Osprey 150 or 175 charge, as opposed to Fastnet's 100 kilowatts. But the EQS flagship maxes out the charger at 175 kilowatts. Both the Model 3 and the Model Y Teslas max out the charger at 175 kilowatts, and most models are capable of 250 kilowatts. VW, ID3 performance and ID4 performance top out at 128 and 135 kilowatts, respectively. OK, summary. Let me state again, your choice of car should not rely entirely on these charging speeds. There are some really nice EVs that charge really slowly, so you should weigh up all the options and decide which are critical to you. You might place quality and style, for example a Mercedes EQA, and just accept it will charge slower than another brand without the same build quality, but with much faster charging. That's your choice. The vast majority of EV drivers who can charge at home will find these tables totally useless, as they should. And some will see the table as an attack on certain cars. It isn't. If you only charge once a week, and you don't mind taking your leisurely coffee while it charges, you should also ignore these figures. But there are plenty of people who either drive long distances, either for leisure or for a living, and regularly take road trips. These drivers should pay attention to these rates. Taking an hour to charge while you eat a leisurely lunch is, well, it's really great. But waiting for your EV to charge for an hour while you're late to get to your chosen destination, that's just stressful. And remember that these are the theoretical maximum speeds you're ever likely to get. You never will. The actual rate you can actually get will definitely be lower, but that is totally under your control. Maximum charging speeds are not. They are set in the factory, fixed forever. Well, please watch out for others in this series. If two major factors are under your control, what are they and what do I need to do? Well, thanks for watching. I'm Dave.